Hey everybody, Ryan the Game Show Guy, walking you through today about tips about how to be able to make things disappear in PowerPoint. And by disappear, basically, you can use this in a lot of different ways, but primarily I'm gonna show you here about if I wanna be able to do a game and take away the option of something that has already been selected. So there's two different ways to do this. First way, one is gonna be color, and the second one is gonna be able to make it disappear. Color, make it disappear. Here's the first one. Check out here in a blank PowerPoint what I have here. Let's pretend I'm gonna make myself a game. Um, and so here's my game title. And then I'm gonna put myself a new slide. And I'm gonna do a similar to sort of a Jeopardy style grid. So I'm gonna do a six by five grid there. Take that, get rid of all the formatting. And let's say we're gonna call this topic one. And then 100, 200, 300, 400, like that. Um, make these, resize them, change them, make them fit a little bit better kind of a thing like that. There we go. So now I'm going to be able to show you how to be able to link from from here to the topic one question 100 how to be able to link back and then take away that option this is really easy to do in powerpoint really been frustrated that google slides does not really have this capability to take away the pre-selected the already selected options hoping for google slides to be able to add that um, in the future anyway so i'm going to make myself a new slide here and i'm going to put this in the title say what this is this is going to be topic one and the question is the 100 100 question i'm going to resize this change that to fit it in the middle and now since this one's all going to be about using the color and way to be able to camouflage your link so before i get too far i want to be able to um first off oh i need to be able to put in a link back to the main board so I'm gonna do a thing called main board right there. Now let's start talking about hyperlinking. I've highlighted that text box. I'm gonna right click it or go to control K or Windows or a command K, go a place in this document and link back to the title. So now that has been linked. And if you notice that the color on the link is blue, that links, links, links me back to, uh, to here. From here, get rid of my title. From here, I wanna be able to link my 100 point question and go to the topic one 100. Notice I mentioned be able to write it in the title. Here's a nice tip that if you put your, if you use titles as opposed to text boxes, when you try to be able to navigate your links, it'll actually give you them here, the name of what you have actually written down makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna link the topic one 100 to topic one 100. And there is the, um, the blue link. Uh, I'm gonna copy this one. I'm gonna duplicate that and make this one topic one 200. Go back over here and change this link to, you can see how that's changed, topic one, 200. Now, the way in which this all works is, let's show how this goes here. If I'm here on my main board, it is blue. If I click on the 100 point, it jumps me to 100. To get back to the main board, click on that. And now it takes me here, back to the, uh, here. And if I notice the difference now, is the difference is, is that the, Blue means a link I haven't been to, and purple means a visited link. This is how links used to work back in the early days of the internet. Blue was new and purple was a visited link. So what we all need to be able to do is just, I could be able to trick that and make it disappear by making the visited link be the same color as the background. Right now, this is a boring white and black. So if I wanted to make this a little bit more Jeopardy style, I'm going to go over here, right click them all, go to format, change the format on this to a blue and to give it a little bit more of that kind of style. And then um, I need to change the link colors themselves. So this is where it goes on the top in PowerPoint. It says, does uh, you see home insert, whatever I'm going to go to design over here on the right under these variants that you can see here. If I click on the drop down, there's colors, and then this is the magic spot here where it says customize colors. All of these, if I move my mouse, are all pre-selected sort of changes to them, but I wanna customize my own colors. By clicking on custom colors, shows me texts and accents, and there's a lot of different ones. These are the standard default to this particular slide, that, uh, to this slide deck that I'm using. The two to focus on is hyperlink and followed hyperlink. There's, like I mentioned, blue and purple. So I want my 
hyperlink that has never been clicked on before to be Jeopardy style. So I'm going to make that white. Then the visited link or the followed hyperlink, I'm going to be able to make that any color that you want to be able to make it um, know that it's different. If you want it to be completely camouflaged, you would have to match the exact same color. I know that I chose this blue accent color, and you can be more specific with, with that by having the correct hexadecimal color. But anyway, I'm going to click on followed hyperlink. And folks, now this is what it looks like. If I'm here, the topic one is gone. It's not, it's still there because notice as I hover my mouse over the 200, I can see the finger on there about that it's a, a link. And if I put my mouse here, it still shows up because the link is there and the words are there. They're just the exact same color. So let me show you this. If I click on 200, it jumps me forward to topic one, 200. If I click over here, whoops. If I click over there, it takes me back to the board and I can see now that the, that that option is gone. So it's a great way in which to be able to hide links but they're actually still there. Let's try to, uh, the, the second way in which to be able to do this. The second way is to actually make them disappear. So I'm going to start that again. I'm going to put in another grid. Put in my, change my formatting here. And I'm going to call this topic one. And now again, 100. 200. Sorry, check that. We can't use the table. I'm going to have to do this a different way here because these have to be separate elements. So what I'm going to do here is you're going to actually have to do a separate one for each because a table is all one thing. So here I'm going to call this topic one. Then I'm going to make that a size kind of like I want and move that around to maybe have that Jeopardy style. That's going to be there. Then I'm going to copy and paste that or, or control or command drag. And then here's my 100 text box. And then I can make copies and copies, make that one 200. The reason that these things need to be separate boxes is because we have to put certain um, uh, animation properties to them. Um, I'm gonna come over here and make a new one. And this one is gonna be my new board topic one. And here is the 100. To make us feel, and we know they're different, I'm going to change the colors on this to something different. I'm going to make that green. All right, so now I want to be able to go from here, hyperlink that to this particular board. And I need to be able to have a link back. So I'm going to do another text box in the corner. Uh, question board. Hyperlink that thing back to here. And... All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to hyperlink this and say, where are we going to go to? I'm going to go to my new topic, 100. Click on that. Now, notice it is because I clicked on the text box itself, I did not click on the words. I clicked on the box, so the object itself, so making this object go over there. So if I click on this, click on it, and go to the board it's not a hyperlink because the words are not hyperlinked. It is the shape of the text box. And that's going to become important because now watch what I can do here. On the top, I'm going to go to animations. And many, most of the time we're familiar with the animations showing up. Now I'm going to add an animation and actually make this an exit animation. Animation to go away, different types or whatever. But I'm going to choose the most basic, which is disappear. So when I click on this box, it's going to do two things. It is going to, um, it's going to be hyperlinked and it needs to disappear. But hold on, I forgot to show something. The most important part, I need to be able to associate the click of the box to the, to the disappearing thing. So in order to see that, I got to get into a little bit of the back end of the animation um, properties. So under the animations, if I go to animation pane, and now I can see here, here's all of the elements that I have. And it says, hey, there's this text box, which is what we have highlighted. If I double click that, here's the options for this disappearing. So first off, do I want to sound with it? No, I'm okay with that. Timing. This is the important part. You want to go to the timing tab and where it says on click. I don't want this to happen on a click. Sorry, I do want it to happen on a click. I can make it automatic. But the important piece is what we call triggers. If I click on triggers, it says, okay, animate this 
I'm going to choose on the start of the effect of what? I'm going to say, hey, when you click on the thing called text box 100, then I want this thing to disappear. So understand those. Disappear on the click of text box 7 called 100. Click OK. Now, if I go into this and I click here, you can see two things will happen simultaneously. I'm going to click on the 100 and it will link me and disappear the text box altogether. Didn't see it happen. It happened too fast because it hyperlinked it. Now, when I go back to the board, it is gone. Unlike the previous one where I hit, camouflaged the color and you could still see the uh, finger that is uh, there, it's not there at all. Uh, this slide deck doesn't see it. Of course, it's still in it once I get out of the, uh, get out of here, but that is now completely gone. Um, now, the best part, I know I did this number 200 and 300, but watch this. If I copy and paste this, control and drag or command drag on my mouse is a really nice way. Now, if I change this, change the, the content inside there, and if you notice as I do this, over here on the right-hand side, it has copied all those animation triggers with it. So every time that has been copied, if I drag this again and again, and again, I can now make my board. And now if I notice, look at this on the right, all of those triggers have been associated with them. The links won't match because they're all going to go to the same one, Topic 1 100. I can change them. Let's say if I'll go to here, duplicate that slide to Topic 1 200. This one I'll now need to be able to click on the box, Control-K, link that to Topic 1 200 and that's how it ultimately is going to work so remember you're not doing highlighting doing the text you're doing the box itself many different creative ways in which that you can be able to do that let me show you a couple of them here and kind of how it works in the real world here is my jeopardy style game and in my jeopardy game if i click on this and i show you my animation pane here is jeopardy and all of these on the right hand side are now all the triggers that are telling you to be able to go to that particular topic and also be able to make it make this disappear. They're just text boxes. And when I click on any of them, I can say, go to this topic. It will jump me to topic one, 200. Click on the board to take me back. And now it has disappeared. So again, you're treating these text boxes as objects. Side note, you can make anything into to do this to anything. So you can do it to images or graphics. Make your own pictures. Go find them on the internet. Find buttons. Make your own buttons. So this idea of being able to have something animate and disappear on the trigger could be absolutely anything. Um, and then the other option here is if I can show you, here's another one on, uh, this is a game called Trivial Pursuit. And in Trivial Pursuit, the same idea, but I want you to see what I did this time is, in this particular game, if I bring this up to my questions, you can see here I have multiple different topics and they're all color coded. So let's say I'm going to go to the second one, the pink topic for one. It jumps me to the pink topic for question number one, jumps me back. And then when I go to my questions, again, I have now color coded it and something just different. I didn't make it disappear and I, and I couldn't make these disappear because there were six different colors. I have yellow pink, green, and so forth. And so I just wanted to be able to, for the user to know and the players to be able to know which one's different. So you can make them um, disappear or camouflage or be able to just give them a different, you know, denote that there's something that they've or we've already been to. Two simple ways. I hope you can find some interesting ways to be able to use these in your own. Enjoy the tip.